All right. Open up my book here. So I'm going to start us with a prayer. Place my hands on my heart, taking that breath of love and gratitude. So grateful for this opportunity to come together to be the two or more who are gathered in the name and the nature of love. Grateful for our willingness to have open hearts, open minds, for our willingness to shine the light of love on any blocks to love and to allow them to be dissolved and resolved back to the root source from which they came. We're grateful to surround our precious sister Saskia, our friend Scott, and anyone else who may be experiencing COVID or any kind of illness or misperception that they feel the love that is surrounding them and that they realize that love is their true nature and that they be comforted and blessed by all earthly and heavenly assistance. Mm -hmm. We ask that same earthly and heavenly assistance to surround us now, loving us, blessing us, blessing the technology that we get to use to come together, bringing peace in body, mind, and spirit. And we're grateful that we get to <clears throat> share the benefits of that peace, of the blessings, of the love that we are with everyone because we're one with them. In grace and gratitude, we let it be, and so it is. Amen. Amen. Um. So we're in... <clears throat> excuse me, chapter 20, section eight, the vision of sinlessness. And I'm going to start it off by reading the first paragraph because it spoke very deeply to me. Vision will come to you at first in glimpses, but they will be enough to show you what is given you who see your brother as sinless. Truth is restored to you through your desire as it was lost to you through your desire for something else. Open the holy place that you closed by valuing the something else. And what was never lost will quietly return. It has been saved for you. Vision would not be necessary had judgment not been made. Desire now it's whole undoing, and it is done for you. And I thought that the vision that he's talking about here, when we see it in glimpses, for me, it feels like the glimpses are when we see something miraculously happen or when we feel something that has appeared to be miraculous uh, or a God moment, like I like to call them, like this God appointment or a God moment, like you you run into somebody you were just thinking about or somebody calls you that you were just thinking about or, um, you know, uh, Jennifer always gives this um, example of uh, some time ago, many, many years ago, when she was like on this search for the perfect lipstick. And she was looking and looking and looking all over the place for this perfect lipstick and she couldn't find it. She would buy one, she'd bring it home, she'd wear it, she'd be like, no, that's not it. That's not it. And um, she said that when she finally was able to let go of the idea that I have to find this perfect lipstick, um, she was able to hold it lightly and just say, I would like to find a lipstick that is right for me. And that she was in an airport getting ready to uh, board a plane. And she got the nudge from spirit to go into the duty-free shop, which she never did. And she went into this duty-free shop and she found the perfect lipstick that she had been searching for all this time. So it's that kind of thing that happens, um, you know, those little glimpses for me that kind of like pulls me along with the hope that more of those things can happen and 
life can feel more light and joyful and um, flowing effortlessly like that. So that's what that first paragraph spoke to me. <laughs> Bill. Hi everyone. Thank you, Linda, for getting it started. And I, I want to comment on what Saskia said that he is a joker. And I, I thought he or she is a joker. Oh, that is such great. Then we all can be jokers because we came from the joker, right? And then I thought, you know, oh, that is the way to raise our vibration. Just being a joker. <laughs> Why well, we have to be so serious, right? So we can joke about, I mean, in any case, all of this is illusion. Why not joke about the il illusion, right? And I'm, I'm grateful, Saskia, you, you bringing and saying that he's a joker. That was really, really good for me to hear. And I'm pretty sure that all of us agree with that, <laughs> you know. And um, where I want to, I know that Linda read this, but I also have highlighted. And it is in, it's towards the end, line six in the paragraph one, desire now its whole undoing and it is done for you. And I was like, yay, it, is it that easy that it is done for me? I, that, I, I said, I'm not desiring uh, the whole undoing to do it on my own because that seemed like a lot. Because I noticed that I have so much judgment that, you know, I can do that whole undoing. But then it was very, very refreshing and empowering to me, the line after the, I mean, uh, when it continued that, and it is done for you, which is my little willingness is required. I don't have to do anything. I don't even have to say, oh, this is not true. I'm the, just, okay, guide me. I don't understand this, but I'm willing. And then the next lines were like, for me, you know, do you not want to know your own identity? And I'm like, of course I do. Why would not I want to know my true identity? And would you not happily exchange your doubts for certainty? Absolutely. Would you not? Willingly be free of misery and learn again joy. Your holy relationships, your holy relationship offers all this to you. And this, this was very, very powerful. It was affirming and I only had to accept this is what I want. I, I don't have to do it all by myself. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Yeah, thank you for all. Saskia and then Carol. And Saskia, I have to unmute yourself, honey. Oh, anyway. it's just that I, I, I can't recognize this um, uh, chapter, uh, se section eight, cha uh, sec oh, chapter, oh, section eight, uh, paragraph first paragraph doesn't look like that at all uh, on in so I'm wondering what what's going on <laughs> why I mean which which book is this yeah do you have the blue books or the purple book uh, it's on the it's uh, this it, one uh, it's 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 not oh god the the one the revised thing that um Oh dear, course companions do, you know. Um, oh, you, I think you have the annotated yeah, version. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. This is the, um, this is the foundation for inner peace version of A Course in Miracles. Oh, right. Uh, last time it seemed to be from, from 
the version. Uh, oh God, never. It's mind. all right. Sometimes Saskia. Means. Sometimes the the they meet exactly, and a lot of times Robert Perry has changed where he puts certain things. So that's why maybe there are times where you feel like we're reading the same thing, and other times not. But we're fa we're following the uh, the smaller one, the Course in Miracles. It's the foundation for inner peace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, and maybe he has it somewhere else, but it's the the title of the section is the vision and the vision of sinlessness. So maybe he has it somewhere else. Yeah, that, that's what I was going to say. Can you look at the title? Yeah. Go by the section. Fortunately, he's changed some titles as well. So sometimes okay. it's the same title, sometimes not. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, sorry about that. The sinlessness in this in this version also. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but the wording is different. Sorry, sorry to. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> so I have a quick you question. Have it if I now. Get it in. Yeah. Carol, Ed, and then Deborah. Um, this was so perfect for me. It spoke to me so, so clearly. Um, I really, really got to understand it. Um, because I had the desire, I said to God, now I'm married a very, very, very long time, over 50 years, okay? I was a child bride. No, <laughs> I wasn't. But um, I, I would get annoyed at my husband for asking me to do things for him that I felt, you know, he could do that. He can make a sandwich for himself. He can answer the phone. He can, I, okay. And this is just his way. And I used to tease him and say, you must have been a prince in some other life because you're just used to this, you know, way of, of being. And I, and so, but I got annoyed with myself and I was impatient with myself that I would allow the buttons to get pushed every single time. And I was sitting the other night, sometimes I get up in the middle of the night just to be by myself. And it came so clear to me because I had the desire to stop being annoyed. I got the answer. My husband came from a very, very difficult background. No love, no real nurturing, no real coddling or mother nurturing kind of, okay. And so that was what he saw in me when he met me. And he was very, very drawn to it. Well, here I am, the poor man's asking for things. And what I realized was, this is his way of saying, please love me. Please pay attention to me. Please give to me what I never got in these little gestures in these little favors that I'm asking. It was so simple and so clear that the vision, finally I felt like the veil came off big time. Now I see him so differently with compassion, with understanding. It just changed everything. It changed everything when I understood his motive wasn't to use me, wasn't to make me work. It's nothing for me to do these things for him, really. It was just so simple and so clear. All I needed was the desire to change, and I did have that. I didn't want to be annoyed with myself every time something like that happened. It's such a simple part of my day, but it made such a difference. And I was just clear as a bell. I didn't really need to read any more beyond the first paragraph because it was just so clear, just so clear. So I don't know if that helped anybody, but let me tell you, sweethearts, it's made a difference all these years later, you know, because it's I don't have it together for sure at all. So I, I really do hope that was a help to somebody. Yes. Thank you, Carol. Thank you so much. 
simply asking to be loved. Beautiful. Deborah, and then Tamara, and then Carla. Okay, thank you for that last share. That was very helpful and it was profound actually. So um, I guess what I'm thinking about today is I do our weekly readings and each day I try to read the le a lesson and do the hourly practice to the best of my ability. You know, sometimes there's interruptions and other things that happen, but I'm just wondering, I mean, like today's reading was very comforting. It seems like as long as we're doing those things that we can do, that it's almost guaranteed that we will make progress. So I guess I'm feeling a little frustrated too about am I making progress? So if I'm doing the things that I just explained, is it pretty much a done deal that I will make progress? Yeah, that's, that's how I'm feeling. I mean, when he says at the, uh, toward the end of paragraph two, rejoice in what is yours, but for the asking and think not that you need make either means or end. So we don't, you know, whatever we ask for, we will receive. We just have to let go of figuring out how that's going to happen. And, okay. and what it, and what it's supposed to look like. You know, like, um, I could use uh, Saskia's example of, you know, desiring to be able to get on the train on Thursday and really having to look at what is the, what is the act actual thing that she is desiring, you know, it might be living in that new space feeling safe and at peace and being surrounded by beauty and she will receive that, but also has let go of feeling like we have to make it happen and then it has to look like how we think it's supposed to look because then it's like we're going through the God drive through and telling God exactly what we want and then he's saying to us, well, do you want fries with that? Which is one of the things that I always, it just, you know, it lightens the load. It lightens the, the mood when I'm, you know, asking for what I think I want and I'm not seeming to get it in the time that I think that I should be able to get it or in the way that I think that I should be able to get it. So I can, I can desire what I would like um, and then let go of how it's going to show up and when it's going to show up and what it's going to look like just knowing that that happiness and joy are already mine that's great linda thank you so much you're welcome thank you for the question deborah um and then um carla hi linda hi everyone thank you so much uh, for what's already been said. And Carol, what you said, what you described just melted my heart and opened me up in a way that I can't even tell you. Just love, I love hearing the shares. Um, I want to read paragraph eight um, because I understand it intellectually, but I want to ask for guidance um, from the Holy Spirit and from all of you, because I know the Holy Spirit works through all of us to help me to, because I want I'll always to see how we can absolutely apply these things in our life so that we can really shift, right? So it says hallucinations, illusions disappear when, this is paragraph eight, when they are recognized for what they are. This is the healing and the remedy. Believe them not and they are gone. And all you need to do is recognize that you, Homera, did this. Once you accept this simple fact and take into yourself the power you, Homera, gave them, you are released from them. One thing is sure, hallucinations serve a purpose. And when the purpose is no longer held, they disappear. So I have a younger brother who has been battling substance abuse issues for as long as I can remember. Um, since he was 16. 
And he also suffers from mental illness. We think it's, I mean, he's been diagnosed several times, but because substance abuse has always been in the picture, you can't really get a clear diagnosis, but I think it's bipolar disorder. And um, unfortunately he has not sustained sobriety for long periods of time. He has, when he does, he's amazing. And he's extremely talented, ex a, excellent artist, excellent with his hands, has a heart of gold. But this substance abuse issues has really um, led to him believing his, his own hallucinations and real hallucinations. And as a result, he creates a lot of conflict for my mother um, when my father was alive. And now, you know, and, and so a, a situation happened with him and a tenant that my mom has a small building that that's her income. And he basically has made three of the tenants now give eviction, like they're leaving because of him. And I was so angry because I was seeing my mom as being homeless and it, that's it. what is what's going to happen and all of this. And this is telling me that I am using that hallucinate, my own hallucination of my brother to hold the idea of separation, which is my goal as in the body, Homera personality, real. So I am thinking as Carol was talking about her husband, uh, obviously this is, seems like, you know, asking for a sandwich is more benign than what my brother is asking, which, but it's all the same, is how can I, I was gonna say protect, but protect and we, means that I'm vulnerable, my mother's vulnerable and that wouldn't be the right word. How can I live in a state of invulnerability for myself and for my mother and yet do the things of the world in a way that would protect sort of tenants and all of that. I, I don't know. And I'm, you know, I guess, I guess I'm, I'm hearing that I don't need to know. I just have to be willing to see this differently and then ask for guidance and help. Um, so I kind of get it, but I wanted to travel to my heart. And if anybody has any input that you can share, that would be wonderful. Thank you. Well, I can say from my own experience <clears throat> that my part in, in that is to let go of, <clears throat> excuse me, of seeing him as broken in any way um seeing what is what appears to be happening with him as wrong because we don't know what his path is um you know I, I had had to do that with my mom I've heard I know you've heard me talk about you know her being sick and me trying to give her the smoothies to make her better healthier <clears throat> so my responsibility in that was to let go of thinking that the way that she was, was bad. Even though in this world, it appeared that she was ill and it appeared that she was making choices that we were going to make her more ill. That was her path. And there is nothing that I could or should do to veer her path because her path is her path, not mine. M my job is only to see her as perfect, whole and complete, no matter what the appearance is on the outside and to love her exactly where she is and know that she has her own guardian angels and uh, angelic force, you know, heavenly, champions helping her out um, in the ways that she needs, not in the ways that I think she should get them, in the ways that she needs. So that, that's that been my experience. And Linda, can you speak a little to then, how about if the person's behaviors are impacting like you or others, like is, is just that asking for guidance to how to handle that or you know what I mean? 
Yeah. I want to come from love, but at the same time, there's practical things that need to be done on this level of form that I'm, you know, that may be perceived as attacking or harmful because he thinks he's right about everything. Yeah. Well, we, we all do. We all think we're right. Um, so the, for me, the, the guidance was to not do anything that my mind was thinking unless it felt gentle and soft and quiet. You know, do this now, say this now, go here now. If it was, oh, well, this needs to happen because this and this and this, then that was not helpful. That was not my guidance. That was my uh, my ego personality, you know, however you want to describe it. That was my ego thought system telling me that, you know, to try and do things on my own accord without allowing God, spirit, the divine to do it on their time and their, in their way, if that makes sense. Very helpful. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Carla. Thank you. I can feel I'm listening. And I know it's a good one. Yeah, I want to speak. So I'll let go of that and let the divine speak to me. So several things uh, it's very colorful this section is the end what the end of chapter two when you're reading linda those last line vision is freely given to those who ask to see and that's the case it's not the carla self it's not the it's not the personality self who asks to see it's the spirit self it's the true self who came into this world to have an experience to support them and learning to focus on the truth i guess i mean so the second line is in chapter one paragraph one line two truth is restored to you through your desire as it is lost to you through your desire to see something else. We, as our spirit self, true self, ask for these experiences. I, I have the, the and it, different issues, but they're not issues there it's the trust the trust the trust the trust and hold to the truth in paragraph four <clears throat> what can you value more than this it's line five why you think the body is a better home a safer safer shelter for god's sin would you rather look on it than the truth? <clears throat> everyone, everyone, your brother included, your everyone, my my tenant chose this life experience. He chose really, I don't know fully, but what I see is that he has a father that showed him how he, this way of living that is not very loving way of living. And whether he learns from it or not, that's his choice. All I can do is support him to the best of my ability, but not be the victim <clears throat> for whatever he's doing. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> and whatever he chooses, <clears throat> sorry. So much. Paragraph seven, the first line. 
Judgment is but a toy, a whim, a senseless meme to play the idle game of death in your imagination. And so we come into this world to play this, to play out the experiences, to learn to focus on the truth more fully. It's not real. That's what this is talking about when this, would you rather, <clears throat> what if you recognize this world is a hallucina hallucination, paragraph seven, line three. What if you recognize this world is a hallucination? What if you understood that you made it up? Each of us, each of us, not just you alone, we all made up our own spectacular, specific curriculum. The script is written, yet where we go in the script, it's a multifaceted, multi-layer, everything, everything, everything that we can ever choose <clears throat> has already been foreseen. But what hasn't been foreseen is what we will choose. Is whatever we choose, that determines the next door, the path goes. We take a ride, we take, you know, if we go to Walmart and we, it depends on how we get there. We choose, we choose our life. We, we don't choose every choice is ours. What are we doing? Are we aligning with the personality self? Am I aligning with the, with the car self? <laughs> On a tent in her base, or <clears throat> am I going to trust that somehow I now I I, I was going to sell a house to my housemate, and but because of COVID, it's, nothing can happen. The courts are closed until July 12th. Nothing can happen. So it's what it is. Is I can't do. It. I can stew, and I can steam, and I can dwell, and I can. I can trust, I can trust, I can trust. And just, this is all my learning. I created this, not Carla, but yeah, I am. Pollution in chapter, in line, paragraph eight line, pollution, hallucinations, a hard time that word, disappear when they're recognized for what they are the learning opportunities for me. And in, line, in paragraph nine, they all, all this ties together. All this ties together. All the truth ties together. It's no, there is no, nothing else. There is nothing else. Nine line one, no only two purposes are possible. One is sin and the other holiness. Nothing is in between. And which you choose determines what you see. And, and then in, later on in line nine, for it is the projection that gives nothing, all the meaning that it holds. And I'm, I know I've, it seems like I've taken a while, but uh, I'm going to read, I'm going to, read something. Yeah, I thought I had it clearly marked. No, don't. So, oh, here it is. One thought of guilt was born into your mind through one judgment of yourself for something you did not do. This then is the imagined guilt multiplied in this world for your belief in what you made. But that which is untrue is nothing and nothing multiplied infinitely remains nothing. Therefore, all of the guilt that you perceive to be part of the world and to be part of you remains what it has always been. It remains nothing. To be multiplied is nothing, and so it is forever. 
and under all circumstances, nothing. We believe what we see is real. It's not real. It's a game that we all came here to play. We got lost in the game. People got lost in the game. Focus on the truth. Love is all that is real. Love is all that is real. Love is the healer. They go whatever choice they make, whoever makes them enter the brother, it's my sister who doesn't talk to me. No, they're making their choices, but love them. Not, you can't change them. Loving them means acceptance of what they choose, not wanting them to be different than what they've chosen. And that means loving yourself because it flows through you first. First. Love is the healer. Thank you, Carla. Dawn and then Carol. Our discussion today reminds me of the practice that I was taught at the Center for Spiritual Living. And that is when I pray for someone, myself, a situation, I'm not really praying for them or a situation. I'm praying so I perceive them differently. If they are unwell, I pray that my vision of them is healed. And this conversation reminded me of that. And I'm really grateful. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Don. Yeah, that reminds me of uh, Carla's description of when you wash a car, what gets washed first? The inside of the hose. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Carol. Um, I'm just piggybacking on Dawn. She's saying exactly what I really would like to say. I, it, I'm just going to give an example of my own life with my older son. I have two boys and a girl. They're very grown. And my older son um, has been my biggest teacher, my biggest challenge for many, many, many years. And I finally went to God one day and I said, God, I can't do this anymore. This emotional roller coaster is just, I'm, I'm, I can't do it. I just can't. I'm not going to survive. And so God just gave me this picture every day to see my son happy, smiling, doing a job he loves, living in a house he loves, having relationships with his sister and his brother that is loving, giving the vision to myself of my son, a holy vision of him. It started as a divine experiment, but it went way past 21 days. It went past a year. Today, this son has awakened or is beginning to awaken. Um, he, I couldn't have conversations with him much more than 10 minutes or 15. I'd make an excuse to get off the phone because I, I couldn't. I couldn't do it. But once I got that direction to see him as God sees him every single day, every single day, every single day, didn't matter what he said to me on the phone, didn't matter what stuff he was into, I can't control that. I couldn't. Um, it took him over 30 years to leave the house. I mean, <laughs> he was with me a very long time. So um, that's just a suggestion that it's because we feel helpless. You know what I mean? I can't fix him. You can't fix your brother. And, but, the, but we can help. We can rise above that situation and envision what we desire. What is your heart's desire for this brother of yours? What do you want in that relationship? What is your desire for him and for yourself? And so envision that, speak it, claim it, thank God for it. 
it's a practice that that helps it helps us because otherwise we feel helpless and i did for a very long time so i you know i'm just telling you what i did in a very similar situation and i hope that it will give you something to work with to help you so powerful carol so powerful i am going to start this very day absolutely seeing him absolutely it, it's it's been miraculous and it really you know when i got to that place where i couldn't do it anymore i couldn't i just was like out of gas totally out of gas because we had been i mean suicide there was stuff involved that was just i couldn't do it anymore i'm not young you, you know and that's when i just finally got to that place i can't do this yeah and that and so finally that desire was so great to to help me i needed help thank you so much you're so very welcome love you thank you carol love you too reminds me of the <clears throat> the line in the course i can't even remember where it is where he says focus on the light and the darkness will take care of itself yeah thank you who else would like to share franca and then nancy gale uh carol thank you for your beautiful share um I just wanted to comment, and I hope you don't mind because I know you a little bit. We've been prayer partners. <laughs> um, Carol, at the same time that you chose to see your son in how he was in truth, you listened to your guidance, correct? Like, because you did set boundaries for a while as well. And I just wanted to bring that in that point in oh yeah oh yeah oh oh, oh. right <laughs> right so yeah. I just wanted uh, like I think it's two-sided we certainly want to see our fellow brothers and sisters as to who they are in truth and hold them in love but sometimes the guidance is to set boundaries or to oh, yes. you know separate yourself um, and so I, I just wanted um, to bring that up. Okay, thank you. Yeah, well, I was for a long time, uh, you know, I had a real hard time saying no. And I'm sure I was part of the problem. I'm not, you know, I'm not denying that. Yeah. I'm sure that things could have worked out differently, but that's not how it was. I had to get to a place that I couldn't do it anymore because I had, you know, I knew I was enabling to some degree. And it's not that it was tough love, it was self-love that I had to employ, keeping conversations short when finally we, if we spoke on the phone, saying that this, there, you, can, you know, there can't be disrespect. I'm your mom. There cannot be disrespect or I can't talk to you. So I learned to say those things. I did have to set up boundaries, I did. And it was for my growth. I needed that because I, I had none. And so, oh yes, thank you, Franca. That was important. It, it was true. I did the very best I could with those type of things and tried to still remain loving, but also care for myself. Totally care for that myself. That is, I didn't do that. Your son. Pardon? Because you're not allowing him to create negative karma by exactly. you, exactly. you know, disrespect. But that took me a long time to come to that. Yeah. You know, I don't know how slow a <laughs> learner I am, but I finally got it. But, um, you know, this is our path. There's no good, bad, right or wrong. It's just how it is. Thank you for bringing that piece in, Franca, because I was kind of thinking about how we have as a family system have enabled my brother's behavior to continue as long as it has. And I have disengaged from that personally, but I watch my mother putting him in positions that, you know, he's created these problems before, but she continues to do the same. 
So I have to, even with my mom, learn to have a boundary with her. She's, they're going to play out their story for as long as they need to, but I don't need to be a part of it. I just need to hold the vision of love for my brother, but also set some healthy boundaries for myself because I sometimes think like, well, if I'm being really loving, why do I need boundaries? But I think it is, it is through loving ourselves that we can love somebody else. So if we let them to do whatever that they think is okay in the moment, We're, like Linda was saying, I'll set up more karma for him too. It's, it's not helping him either. So it's not loving towards him either. Whatever's not loving towards me, it's not loving towards him. So that's, that's what I'm getting from this. Thank you so much for bringing that piece in. Yeah, thank you, Franca. Nancy Gale. I was just, it's all starting with you, Carol. Thank you. This is, that's the best, beautiful, loving conversation, learning, teaching. Um, time in my life. Um, I'm going to, I have a brother. He's two years younger than me. And um, we, we don't speak or anything like that. Um, I'm going to take all of this today and put it on both the, the two of us, my brother and me. Um, my, my original thing I wanted to say was back when I forget in the beginning, but um, with the word responsibilities, there's certain words that trigger me, like consequences. And I think, okay, those are the effects. I change it into those are the results. It had the words that have this horrible meanings for me because of everything. And then one of them is responsibility. And when I, someone said uh, some long time ago, it's like, turn it into responsibility, break the word down, my ability to respond. It just changes everything for me. It makes, instead of me seeing this wall, no, I'm on responsibility. I can say, oh, I'm resp I can, I have the ability to respond to any of this stuff. Um, that's what's helped me so much in this whole thing. Um, it's just, subs or just real life, like the, th the thing, forgiveness, what does forgiveness mean? It's like, I'm, I'm giving, giving for, you know, I'm just release, it's releasing. Just changing the, you know, I just have to have a different meaning or whatever. So I don't know if that helps anybody either, but Carol, so thank you so much for starting this whole conversation. <laughs> and this, this part, this is so meaningful to me. The whole thing, like you said, Carla, it all, it's all one. This whole little section here, bigger section, whatever. It's like all one. It's, all, it's this one giant thing that is like, um, I can't remember all the little pieces that, that was everybody said today, but they're all saying the same thing. And it's like, it's beautiful. It's just absolutely beautifully loving and... Thank you for the conversation. Thank, thank you. Thank you, people. Thank you, Nancy Gale. <laughs> well, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna close this out with um, with our reading from the Pathways of Light uh, Insights for Lesson Number Twenty Six. Um, for next week, we get to begin a new chapter, Chapter Twenty One, um, Reason and Perception reading uh, through the forgotten song um, and then stopping when we get to the responsibility for sight which I'm really excited to get into because that's that's one of my um, favorite sections so that's where we will be next week so for this week um, pathways of light insights for workbook lesson number 26, uh, my attack thoughts are attacking my invulnerability. This lesson is teaching me that if I fear anything, if I am worried about anything, or if I have a concern of any kind, 
that what appears to come from the outside world is really coming from attack bots that are still residing in my mind. My experience of an outer world is an effect, not a cause. If I think I am vulnerable in any way, it is because I am still holding on to attack bots. It is very powerful to have this understanding. What I think of is real in this life journey shows me where there is still a need to heal my mind. Now, instead of continuing with these effects, I can change my mind by handing over all thoughts of duality, all thoughts of attacking or being attacked to the Holy Spirit to be undone. I have a way out of the seemingly endless spiral of thinking that I am weak and vulnerable in a dangerous world. Now I know that this simply is not true. In truth, all is love. So all that is real is invulnerable. In the introduction to the course, Jesus says, nothing real can be threatened, nothing unreal exists. It is only my own attack thoughts that give me the dream experience of being attacked or vulnerable. I can change my thoughts and I am thankful that this is so. I am willing to look at all the places where I am concerned or afraid and realize that these thoughts are an attack upon myself. I can take each situation to the Holy Spirit. I can receive a correction in my perception. This process of taking each concern, no matter how mild it may seem to the Holy Spirit is important. Each baby step takes me one closer, one step closer to returning me to my true identity as love and nothing else. This lesson is making it very clear that if I perceive vulnerability anywhere, that is an attack on myself. I have forgotten who I am. I am forgotten that I was created by love as love. Thus, anytime I perceive somebody as harmed in any way, including myself, or I see the potential for harm, I am attacking myself. I could not perceive weakness if I did not perceive weakness in myself first. In reviewing my thoughts, it is clear that there are many areas in my thoughts where I perceive weakness. I have established many defenses to protect myself. I think about ways to avoid confrontation. I think about taking vitamins to stay healthy. I think about financially preparing for a secure future. I think about what might happen to my body if one thing or another occurred. Thoughts like this pass through my mind many times a day in different forms. Sometimes they seem to be about me. Sometimes they seem to be about other people or world conditions. They are the same. They are all thoughts of vulnerability and therefore they represent belief that it is possible to be separate from the all powerful strength of God, my source. I am grateful that this lesson makes it clear that I can change my mind. It gives me a tool to become aware of the many ways I attack myself mostly unconsciously. By bringing it to conscious awareness, I have the opportunity to turn it over to the Holy Spirit to receive his gentle and loving correction. This is how I free myself from limitation and fear. This is how I transform my world from a place of vulnerability and confrontation and conflict to a place of safety and peace. The more I practice this lesson, the more I will become aware of ways that I limit myself with my thoughts so that I can turn these thoughts over to the Holy Spirit to receive his healing light. The truth is that I and everyone are created invulnerable for we remain in the heart of God, not separate and alone. We remain love and nothing else. Thank you, everybody. Have a good week. I'll see y'all next week. Love Thank everybody. You so Bye. 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 Have a beautiful Thank week. You. Bye. Thank Many you. Blessings. Wonderful. Love you guys. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.